If this homegirl was at the club or something and she tried to sit on my man's lap, then I'll be like, oh, bitch, you move, bitch. YouTube. It is finally that time of the month again where I am on my period and if you're on your period thumbs up this video because we are period buddies. We're on the same cycle girlfriend. <laughs> but actually it is the time of the month where I do another Twitter Twitter, a Twitter Q&A since you guys seem to love these videos more than any of my other videos. Well, actually you guys love these Twitter Q&A videos and my advice videos. Let me know if that is true because if you guys do like these Twitter Q&A videos and my advice videos, maybe I can focus a little more on those thingies, okay? All right, so there are 15 questions that I picked out, so I'm just gonna get started. What is the most ridiculous thing you've ever done? So I thought long and hard about this one and I don't think that I've ever done something really ridiculous just because I'm the type of person where I play it really safe. I feel like I'm a spontaneous person as far as like going places, but as far as doing things, like if someone tells me, oh yeah, jump off this cliff right now, I'll be like, <laughs> you can jump off boo boo because I am not. So I thought long and hard about this question and I think something that really ridiculous that happened, it wasn't something I planned for it to happen, but it kind of did. And I don't know if you guys ever been to Asia. If you haven't, the toilets, well, I don't know, maybe it's a little more modernized nowadays, but then the toilets, they be on the ground, girlfriend. Girl, you squat like this, okay? All right, you see what's happening here? Okay, you squat like this. Well, I had to take a shit, and it was like my second time taking a shit in China with those type of toilets. When I pooped, the shit fell into my pants. <laughs> but yeah, I just had a dookie stain for the rest of the day, so that was kind of ridiculous. When you were younger, what did you want to be and why? I wanted to be a child psychologist when I was little, mainly because I had a very, very troubled childhood. For some reason, even though I was going through some hard times as a kid, I knew that I was going to get over it, and I hope that one day when I get over it, I can assist younger kids that are going through the same thing. What is your biggest fear? P.S. I love you so much. I love you too, girl. Okay, this may sound really cliche, but let me just explain myself. My biggest fear is to not have money when I have a family. Growing up, we were really poor. Ooh, hello, Mr. Squirrel. Hey, oh, he has something in his mouth. Okay, interrupting my story. And I don't mean I need money where I can live a very lavish life. I just want that in the future, my kids would get to live a better childhood than I did. I'm just really afraid that my kids in the future will one day live that life that I did and like just not being able to have like good nutrition or like good education, a nice place to live. And I think that fear goes along with a lot of people. So I, I, I guess it's a pretty normal fear. Did you expect to be a YouTuber or was it unplanned? How does it feel having so many supporters? I have never planned to be a YouTuber. Like I didn't even know being a YouTuber was a thing because when I started making these videos, it was because I was watching Fafinet X3. Her name is Aubrey here on YouTube. I just started my YouTube channel because I don't know, I had nothing better to do over the summer. So yeah, it was totally unplanned. It's still hard for me to accept, believe it or not. Whenever people tell me that they watch my videos, it's like the best thing ever because personally for me, I never really had friends growing up and you guys are like my friends. I just want you guys to know that I really appreciate all of you and I thank you all so much for your support because you guys are like my backbone. And just so you guys know, I am always your backbone too. When you and Wall fight, who usually gives in and apologizes or make up? P.S. I love you so much, girl. I love you too. <laughs> so whenever Juan and I fight, it's always me that tends to start the conversation first. I know that sounds kind of bad because I think every girl wants the boo man to be the one to be like, oh babe, are you okay? Like, what's wrong? Like, that is not a relationship. Our relationship, he's a very hard-headed person and I'm more soft-hearted, I would say. Like, he's a type where he knows, even if he knows that he's wrong, he's a type where he's either like thinking like, should I talk to her because she might still be mad at me or something. So he's never really the one to speak up. It's always me. Do any one of you have a relationship like this? I mean, I honestly don't mind it because I just feel like no matter what, at the end of the day, we're gonna talk about it and it really doesn't matter who says it first as long as the conversation where while we're trying to fix the argument, we're both at an equal mutual understanding. So it really doesn't matter who starts it first, but when we argue, it's usually me to reach out to him. If you could move anywhere in the world, where would you move? I would either move back to San Gabriel Valley or I would move to Hong Kong. Do you slurp your noodles? Hell yeah! Who doesn't slurp their noodles? Okay, for some reason, just slurping your noodles makes it taste so much better. Do you think you're pretty without makeup? I am the most beautiful. I feel like 
I built up this confidence in myself where I feel like with or without makeup, I still feel good about myself. And that's really how it should be. How did you afford to move out and attend Finem? I am trying to do the same. Good luck, girlfriend. And these are some tips I have for you. Number one is to get a roommate. That's how I moved out of my parents' house because Juan and I were splitting rent. Number two is to lower your expectations for living. I think a lot of people, when they move out their first place, they want it to be nice. They want it to be like dream place. But honestly, you just need to lower your expectations because where Juan and I lived, it was not the best. Okay, we had like roaches, we had crickets, we had ants, our heater was broken, our AC was broken. We just didn't live in the best of all neighborhoods, but I mean, it was safe enough for us to live. As long as it's affordable and it's in somewhere safe and the commute is okay for you, then I mean, just lower your standards. Number three is to get a job, whatever it may be, as long as it's kind of helping you. I would say that try to find a job where you can earn tips or you make money off of commission or things like that because that kind of helps your paycheck versus working like hourly. Number four, is to get school loans. Who is your biggest inspiration and role model? Honestly, I do not have a role model and this is how I feel about having a role model. This is something I tell people all the time. Don't ever look up to someone because that someone is human too and they will make mistakes. Like you should be your own role model. But if you ask me like I really have to pick someone that I really admire and look up to, it would be my mom because my mom is the most hardworking woman. If you guys ever met her, she's the type of woman that will work her ass off and have no complaints. Has anyone flirted with Wa in front of you? If so, what did you do? If not, what would you do? No one has ever flirted with Wa right in front of me, but if they did, it really depends what they do. Like if this homegirl was at the club or something and she tried to sit on my man's lap, then I'll be like, oh bitch, you move, bitch. Just kidding. But um, honestly, if someone did that, like to that extreme, I'll just be like, excuse me, miss, you need to get yourself together. It's not a big deal. I think it has a lot to do with trust in your relationship. We have a really strong trust. How tall are you and what's your current weight? I want to answer this question because a lot of people seem to want to know and I feel like a lot of people think that I'm super underweight and unhealthy and I just want to let you guys know that I am actually within my healthy weight. I am five foot four tall and I am 115 pounds. For those of you who think that I've been like on this huge diet, I am not. I just think that as I got older, I just got really lucky where my metabolism is still really fast. Why are you so confident about talking about things that most people aren't comfortable talking about? I think the main reason is because I have no shame in anything. Anything that happens in your life happens to other people as well. Have you ever gotten into a fight? Growing up, I've always fought my older sister. That's nothing major, but like a fight that I've gone into with like someone that is not family um, would be Wa's ex-girlfriend. It wasn't a major fight or anything. It was one of those that lasted for like 20 seconds. Nobody really got hurt. It was just one of those that just started and ended but that could be a whole nother story in another video. Number 15, which is the last question, is would you ever get a nose piercing? I would never get a nose piercing. I think it's just because it won't match on me. Also, I am afraid of needles. Like the furthest I ever went was getting a belly piercing and that was because I thought it was cool and it was sexy, so I got it when I was 18. I mean, I don't regret it at all because I really like it. I feel like it looks cute in bikinis. As far as other piercings, I don't think I would ever want another piercing just because I am really afraid of needles and um, mm -mm, girl, I don't do that. So yeah, that is it to this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys like my Twitter Q&A videos. That's it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.